So let's get into it. Since we have to calculate expectation values of observables, our observables being both the position and the momentum, just recall the general expression for the expectation value of an observable. And remember that the expectation value of that observable means that I'm going to insert these um, operator corresponding to that particular observable in the expression of the probability density. And it's acting on the function that is directly to its right. Now, these particular operator is going to change depending on the kind of observable that we're calculating. Let's do the first one, that is calculating the square of the expectation value of the position. So expectation value times expectation value. So that means that we only have to calculate the expectation value of the position once, and then we multiply the value that we get by itself in order to get the square of that. Now, make sure to look at this expression. The analogy that we have now is my observable is the position, my operator is going to be the position operator. And in that particular case, remember that we have the explicit form of my wave functions. I'm substituting in each of the sides, wave function star, the complex conjugate of that, times the wave function. And the position operator is just multiplication by the position, in this case, by x. Another thing that you have to make sure that you remember, this is the most general expression, the complex conjugate of my function. But in this particular case, you can see that the function is a real valued function. So the complex conjugate in this case, it's going to be equal to the wave function itself. And also another thing that you want to remember is that since we have exponentials here, the multiplication of two exponentials, the exponents just get added together. So we perform all the multiplications that we can. And what we end up having is a the product of two functions, the uh, position x times my original wave function square. Um, remember that once we have set up this problem, we can start thinking about the math and we can actually use Mathematica to do that. We are defining the wave function just exactly as the one that was given here. So that's the one that we're defining here. The very first thing that I'm going to ask you is always make sure that the function is normalized. In this case, you have a constant in front of this exponential. So you m it may be tempting to say that it is normalized. That should be the normalization constant, but it's not necessarily the case. It could be just a constant. So in this case, we're going to be assuming that this constant value is a positive real number. So that's the condition that I'm assigning here when I'm solving in Mathematica. And then remember that the expression is just going to be the complex conjugate of my function times the wave function to calculate the probability density. And then I have to integrate over, over all space in order to get the uh, normalization constant. That's a normalization condition. And overall space in this case for my problem is from, my, from minus infinity to infinity. So that's all space in this particular case. So I set up the, uh, the equations. And yes, I got uh, that the integral is equal to 1. So that means that this particular function is normalized. So now I can move on to do any other calculations. Now, um, what we have in this particular case is x times my wave function square, the probability of density. And what I want to do before even checking what the value of the corresponding integral is, is let's plot the integrand, the function of the integrand, to see how that behaves. And I'm just going to be um, plotting in a particular range. And if I don't give values to beta, Mathematica doesn't know what to do with this one. It will not plot anything. So I really need to give specific constant values to that uh, parameter. And look what I have. This is the function of my integrand. And then you can immediately see also with here this plotting just what the values, particular values uh, of beta you're plotting. Anyway, but the important part here is the shape of the integrand, because what we're going to be doing is integrating all the way from minus infinity to infinity. And what you can see is that given this is an odd function, the integral should be equal to zero. So we're going to plot it. We're going to be doing it now in Mathematica uh, to make sure that that is actually the case. But if by having this idea of how the function looks like, we immediately know that the integral must be zero. So now that's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to check that um, the expression that we have integrated from minus infinity to infinity should give me zero. There you go. That is the result that we were expecting because, again, the integrand. So I'm urging you to always plot to have a good feeling for the physics of your problem, what is what your wave function is representing. Now, with that, we come back to our problem. And then since we know that this integral is equal to 0, 0 times a constant is 0. And then the expectation value for your particle is 0. And now, if the expectation value of the position is 0, 0 times 0 is also 0. So this particular expectation value or the square of the expectation value should be equal to zero. Now, what that is telling you in terms of the expectation value is that if you were to do a series of measurements, random measurements over a large sampling of experimental measurements, the average value, the expectation value for the position will be exactly zero. And again, that from the form of the function that we're integrating, the position times the probability density uh, values are going to be average to that uh, center point. OK, so we have the first. Let's go to the second one. Now we want to calculate the expectation value of the position square. It is not the same. Now, the, um, if you look at my 
operator. The operator is going to be x squared, which is equal to apply the, op the position operator twice. Now, with that, since the position operator is just multiplication by x, then the second time is multiplication by x again. So I end up having that uh, this operator uh, is just multiplication by x squared. So the setup of the problem is similar to what we had before. I substitute the values of my wave functions, but I don't want you to forget that in case your function is um, a complex function, if you write it always like this, you will not miss the fact that you have to complex conjugate your function. So even though this is real, that's why I'm still um, including this value just for other cases where you have that, don't forget to complex conjugate your function. Anyway, we have to, we can factor out some terms. Uh, we can take out this particular constant, and then this is the function that we have to integrate now. It's x squared times this one squared that gives me two times beta x squared. Let's do the same idea as before. Now we are trying to calculate the expectation value of the position square, where my operator is position operator square. We're defining the wave function the same way as we did before, so let's input that. Same idea, let's see how this behaves. Let's see how the integra integrand behaves. And this is what we find. Now, this is an even function. And as you can see, if we are integrating from minus infinity to infinity, it's not going to cancel out, like in the case of the odd functions where we have a negative and a positive part. In this case, we have two positive parts. It's going to add up to a constant value. So in this case, we know that it's not going to be uh, 0. So let's see what the value is. In cases where your function is even, and if I'm integrating from minus infinity to infinity, it's the same as integrating twice from 0 to infinity. And the reason for that is, again, because if you integrate on one side, it's exactly the same integral in value that if you integrate from the, the middle to the right. So in total, you can say, I'm going to integrate only this part and multiply it twice to get the total integral. And if you were to use tables, uh, the integral that you most likely will see is of this form, from 0 to infinity, instead of minus infinity to infinity. So that's something to have in mind. Uh, and what I'm doing here in Mathematica is just uh, confirming that those two will have to give me exactly the same result. And yes, sure enough, I get exactly the same thing when I'm integrating from minus infinity to infinity or twice from zero to infinity. So this is the value of the integral that I that I wanted to, to get. And just to be consistent, according to the calculation that I set up here, uh, what I have is x squared times this function. And that's exactly what I wanted to calculate here with Mathematica. This one already includes the constant in my definition of psi. But again, just to be consistent with uh, what I had, I need to calculate this particular integral. So this is the one that I have here. And when I calculate that, it gives me this value. So this is the one that I'm going to use just to continue the, the solution of this problem. And that's exactly what I got here as my result. And now here I can just simplify. And finally, I end up having 1, one over 4 times beta, which again is the same value that I got when I included the normalization constant in the definition of psi. Good. So that is the value of the expectation of the position square. And remember that I need these two to define the standard deviation in the position.